and welcome to another episode of 72 Pin Connector. With us this week, we have Tom. What's up, everyone? Josh. Hello. And Adam. Hi. 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 How are you? Hi. <laughs> it's going pretty well. How about you guys? Had a pretty good week? I'm yeah. in pain. Well, I'm, I'm in oh, severe pain. pain. Yes. Pain. That's yes. Well, that's that's not I climbed a that's... fucking mountain, bitch. You oh, climbed yeah. a mountain. mountain. <laughs> you, climbed mountain. A, you climbed a mountain. Which mountain? Half a mountain, not three quarters of a mountain. I climbed a whole mountain, but Which I made a mountain? horrible mistake. So I had Uh-oh. like two big things of Gatorade with me. I drank those going up the mountain. It was wonderful. And then I realized, oh shit, how do I get down? I have no mountain? water. I have no Gatorade. There is nothing on top of the mountain except for top of mountain. <laughs> roll. Just, just like roll down the mountain. Oh, I thought about it. There was, there was a, a lot of rookie sticks. mistake, Tom. Rookie <laughs> mistake. Yeah, it was it was bad. But I climbed. You should it just out. like you need a you need like a hang glider or a zip line or something to so make it worth it. Like you know, dude, you say zip that. lines. Oh my god, a zip line would be fucking badass. So That's it was you- actually <laughs> better. It was actually better than that. And we saw people trekking up the mountain carrying these big ass fucking packs of stuff. I was like, Jesus, these guys are really into the hiking. Turns out that that's an emergency parachute and a paraglider. They get Whoa. to the top of the mountain. They unstring that bitch and then they just take off. They just like catch the wind and they glide off the mountain. That's how they get down. <laughs> so that is they're getting doing down something and fucking better. That's than, pretty cool. It was amazing. <laughs> that's how you leave a mountain in style right there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's not flying. It was, it's falling it with badass. style. <laughs> Damn right. So what about um, you, Adam? You climb any uh, mountains out there in the uh, uh, cornfields of Ohio? <laughs> <laughs> there are no mountains to climb, and if there were, I did not climb them. Um, Sick. Yeah, sorry. That's the best I got. There's a lot of There's disappointment. Some corn. I went for a drive <laughs> earlier. That was pretty nice. It was a really nice day today. Uh, it's warm, sunny. It's not humid. It's not raining. Nice. So I just kind of drove around with my windows down for a while. It was nice. It's nice. Yeah. Just, just wandering, wandering around through the high end flatlands that's what i'm gonna call it <laughs> See, honestly it though, was, some of that's really nice like some of the woods and stuff to drive out in the country during the summer windows down listen to some music oh, oh yeah i, don't, yeah, I yeah. don't live out in the country and i did not drive out in the country so you're did, cl- did you, you guys, get to the country uh, in like five minutes from where you're at though it's not too hard to get to for did you. you guys know that the inspiration for the entire landscape of fallout 3 was based on ohio today are you, oh really i mean it, it, it wasn't fallout at all, three but i thought that was detroit today <laughs> it yeah. wasn't at all but you know <laughs> yeah De- detroit post uh what post 2002 this week's yes, shitty yeah. fact <laughs> <laughs> this week's not at all true gaming related fact <laughs> brought to you by we're full of shit comcast well, you know that's uh, one of those games that, that. <laughs> oh god yeah did you get all so, your stuff worked out so um i didn't end up calling him back so for full disclosure you guys might have noticed the last couple streams we've had some really choppiness when it came to live well lo and behold i was having some internet issues that only happened during our streams and i have i'm paying for the bandwidth either both up and down plenty to cover this well i was hung up on by my isp when i called and confronted them about this you know, and I, I would accuse Irk of like shit posting or exaggerating here, but he was sitting right there and I was sitting right there and he had customer service on speakerphone and the dude just like Irk, I believe you said, so wait, you're telling me that I'm paying for service that you're not delivering. And the dude just fucking hung up. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, holy that's shit, incredible. Comcast. That is incredible. Get well, he, amazing. he tried to pin Get it wrecked, on Tom. my... He tried to pin it on my uh, modem, and I'm like, well, sir, I've already unplugged it and plugged it back in exactly how you just had me do it, and it didn't work before, so what changed now? And right. he just got quiet. There was literally like 60 seconds of silence on the phone because <laughs> he did not know how to answer me. It was great. <laughs> Nice. End of the story is Comcast customer service sucks. And so far, I see a pretty green down there with 30 FPS. So we're streaming okay right now. Don't worry. Nice. It this will kid. fail by the end of this podcast. Uh, if, yeah. <laughs> did, it all goes according so, to plan. <laughs> did, you call, did you call them back and complain about the fact that the guy just hung up on you? I wanted to. But I, I really you wanted said you to, were going to. But. I really wanted to fish. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and, and fishing took enough. precedence. Yeah. Did you catch anything? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
come on, it's me. Did you catch dinner? Did, catch? Did you cook what you caught? No. Did oh, catch and release? I, I have been struggling on the trout front out here because I don't want to uh, eat. Are you a catch and release? release? Oh, so you don't want to like eat the fish. You just want to make it late for something. What about like salmon? (laughs) Except for like trout and salmon. That is what I want to eat. And I think next week I'm actually going for some walleye. You know, you flay those out, bread them, deep fry them. Oh, fuck Mm. yeah. I haven't had good fish in a while. I went to a restaurant and I had really good fish. Dude, your restaurant was fucking awesome. I, I I didn't have to like cast or get on big boots or pants or anything <laughs> i just said i would like the fish and chips please and then 10 minutes later it was there that's oh, a rock solid nice. strategy for fishing I, I, <laughs> yeah uh, that's way right? more efficient i you tend to 100 percent success rate my, my my method's a little bit shoddy I, I go to the supermarket and i said it's fish please and they give me a raw fish and i have to cook it so oh jesus i don't know what, what i'm doing I, I, who has think, time think for of that the efficiency <laughs> Right. Yeah, but then I, you I'm get a efficiency. But, but you know, really, I'm a catch and release guy. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a catch and release guy, so I just like give it right back to him. I don't have to cook anything. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to pay for this fish, please. Okay, here you go. Okay, you can have this fish back. <laughs> go ahead and sell it to the next guy. <laughs> yeah, we're good here. <laughs> so generous. Thanks. I just wanted to try fishing today. You really helped me out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Got a big one. You, act, you actually go to the back of the market with a wide brimmed hat with hooks hanging from it. You have your chest waders on walking back to the cabinet. Oh my God. You need to have like a buddy dressed exactly like that next to you. And you can hold up the fish you just bought at the market and have your buddy take a picture of it. Like oh, that's, that's your big idea. idea. <laughs> yes. The best that's thing about that concept is like, is like my wife wanted fish. I just picture that in my head. Like, like the guy comes <laughs> in from like a long ass day. It's like noon. You know, he's like, he's done fishing. There's no options left. And he's like, my wife wanted fish. I have to come home with fish. And so he's like there. <laughs> <laughs> the guy, or the guy just knows. Sneaks he's to like, the market. He does that every single week because he's just that bad at fishing. He's like, <laughs> guy's like, no fish again, Rick. It's like, no fish again. And they hit hands on the fish even, and they take off. <laughs> it's go about and their then, business. <laughs> and it's even funnier because you're like, you pose this in like the middle of the Midwest and the guy <laughs> walks in with salmon that's not even in the area. <laughs> His wife has no clue. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you should be on a show. You're amazing at fishing. Like, yes. She just well, thinks he's the best fisher snapper. ever. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't the ocean like 300 miles away? I'm just that good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really long line. So we put a lot of salt in this one pond. <laughs> no, nah, nah, 72, so, 72 so fish I, connector. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to segue from 72 fish connector and talk about 72 food connector uh, because I went on an adventure. Uh, by mm-hmm. the way, um, when you're taking bus lines, the 554 isn't like taking you to a close place next to the 555. So when you're like, eh, it's only one off, how bad could it be? It takes you to an entirely different city. That said, it was a fun adventure, and I saw, uh, I went, got to go to um, Chinatown down in the middle nice. of Seattle. It was wonderful. So we saw nice. like a couple dingy, generic looking Chinese restaurants. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we found this place called Mongolian Hot Pot. Apparently, Ooh. this is a thing. It's a popular thing. I had never been to a Mongolian Hot Pot. Oh, but it sounded weird. And we're like, yeah, let's let's just fucking do this. Yeah. So um, for those of you unfamiliar with it, because I was unfamiliar with that concept. But the melting pot, while they do fondue, they also have hot oil cooking where you get this big thing of oil in front of you you just put raw meat in it it's Mm -hmm. similar to that only i think it was more asiany broth yes yes that was not an attempt at being stereotyping i mean it's like it's an asian (laughs) broth it's an asian food place (laughs) um so we we walk in and there are like oven burners in the middle of tables with metal bowls filled with liquid bubbling everywhere (laughs) all around us i'm pretty sure um like it's just fucking weird. Uh, so we get to the table and this waitress is just not having any of our shit in the best way. She was really nice, but she wasn't having any of our shit. Cause we just looked confused walking in there. And she said, just, just get the combo. So, okay, we'll take one combo please. And they bring out just 
droves of food. Like the food can't physically fit on your table. So you have an entire tray next to your table full of this raw food. You're just not eating fast enough. That's on you. Exactly. So (laughs) we get, we get our, our spicy broth to a rolling boil. It's just fucking delicious. We've got like paper thin sliced meat. We've got all kinds of seafood. We have, you know, vegetables. So it looks nice. Um, Mm. dude, don't (laughs) undersell broccoli. You put broccoli in a good broth that just absorbs the flavor of the broth. Oh, it's so good. But you know, what's better than broccoli absorbing the flavor of the broth. If you just take a spoonful of broth, well, and meat. (laughs) (laughs) So we had thin shaved steak, thin shaved lamb. I I think the combo for it said it feeds two to three people was like 30 bucks and that's it. Oh, it's not bad. It was, yeah, it was really cheap and delicious. And oh my God, I've never been that full. Well, they don't have to pay for chefs. They just cut the meat and say, here, cook it. (laughs) That is true. Some some places, sometimes it's the cheap places that are better than the expensive places. True. It was wonderful. Sometimes you go into a place and you're just looking at it and you know it's going to go one of two ways. A, you're getting food poisoning. B, it's going to be some of the best shit you've ever (laughs) eaten. Hey, why not both? Or both. Or both. After that, we got, uh, it wasn't bubble tea specific, like some oh, tapioca. God. We, we got fruit chunk tea, which is cold Asian inspired iced tea. So I got like a jasmine honey thing with bits of strawberry in it. That it was delicious. Kinda, uh, so Tom's getting really, really close to being hipster now. So uh, I think I've decided to trade in my laptop and get a typewriter. Mm, that's a good call. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Because you like the way the keys feel? Well, yeah. 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 <laughs> you could replace your desktop keyboard for a typewriter. Like they, Actually, that they, would have, be... they have mods to do that. So like that would be wonderful. They, there's a couple of people that sell this like typewriter keyboard. I'll find a link and I'll post it. <laughs> you see, he's just needs to get rid of his desktop computer because it's a waste of energy and they're not green. That's yeah, his typing, his typing is already way too loud. If you make it a typewriter <laughs> too, it's going to drown out the sounds of the earth. So <laughs> none of, no one on stream hears it right now because we're on laptops and we have noise gates on our microphones. But Tom at home over Discord, the very Jesus first Christ. couple casts we ever did, his waveforms or just general volume was louder when he typed than when he talked. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, that sounds yeah, about right. It was terrible. It was dreadful. All of my coworkers love me because I, I brought that keyboard to work. Oh, you okay. have a mechanical <laughs> keyboard at work? <laughs> oh, it's it's not just mechanical. Because mechanical, you know, you get a nice quiet spring like a or a quiet like a brown switch, or like a, clear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But no, I've I've got a buckling spring keyboard. Oh, so Tom's you a have, douche. Do you have blues? No, buckling no, spring, like, like the old the IBM old model. IBM. Oh, oh, so you oh okay. the keyboard you could kill a man with. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I, I won't go back. I love those things. They're amazing. <laughs> I love playing video games on them. It's just, especially when you WASD, like Binding of Isaac, you guys ka-chunk, have heard ka-chunk, me. Ka-chunk, yeah. ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. Uh, okay. I, I know you love playing video games on them, but I hate playing Battlegrounds in Discord with somebody with a mechanical keyboard because yeah. through the mic constantly where you're trying to listen for enemies, you hear. Yeah, it's the worst. <laughs> or the so, worst thing is when someone jumps into Discord being all nice and talkative and you're talking back because, you know, you're just running across the field, looting an empty mm-hmm. house. Then someone enters your house and you can't get the person to shut up. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> no, yeah. no, that, that's, this is getting intense. I've definitely uh, shut down Discord or put it on deafen when, when things get too intense. <laughs> in yeah, but you have to click out of the game to do that. That's and you risk- have to talk to your True. friends. Yeah, yeah, it's very risky. And you have to inform your party members, which happen to be in Discord as well. Yeah. Oh, I don't. I just I just exit Discord. Fuck those guys. Whatever. <laughs> I'm on my own. He's going rogue. <laughs> he's gone. He's gone. So um, let's rail it back a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because um, sure. that got a little um crazy. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> well, Sorry. we kind of we kind of went back to video games there at the end. Yeah. That was yeah, strong. It's not too bad. Strong segues. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the show, guys. Thank you all for coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Good, good week. Uh, we got to post another postcast game. Um, so, uh, quick shout out though. I do want to throw this out here at the beginning, so everyone knows. The last few weeks yeah. we've been doing um, post show community games. Uh, it's been going pretty well. Yeah. Last week we did uh, golf with your friends. 
which is fucking hilarious. I think it was an amazing time. time. We had like that was a really good time. Ten people all in Discord bitching at each other. (laughs) A lot of different game modes. We played like three or four rounds. We don't. I'm convinced that Dark Soul cheated the whole game. Yeah, Dark Soul was was killing it the whole time. I have no proof that he cheated, but he must have. He's too good at that. (laughs) Well, you don't have any proof that he didn't cheat. Yeah, right? You see? see? There that, you go. Yeah. That's the outlook. So you need, like to, you need to, yeah. to use your words to, like, you know, understand. He's that guilty you... until proven innocent, damn it. Exactly. That's the yeah. way of the world. That's how, that's how. This is America. This is America. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is America now. But um, tonight we will be continuing this theme and um, immediately following the, ca- well, about 10 minutes after the cast, I have to move my computer a little bit. We will be playing Jackbox Party Pack the third. And I believe we'll probably start with Quiplash 2 and see where that takes us. But the oh beauty God. of this game, everyone, is you don't need the game to play. There will be a code on the stream. You will punch it in on your mobile device or your desktop or whatever you're watching the stream on. And you can jump in the game and play right along. Yeah, so all, all you need is a nice. phone, iPad, computer. I didn't have to spend Kindle. money this week. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This is good. <laughs> you just yeah. play. You, you really need some something that can access a web page. Like you could probably play this on a pebble if you really. Pebbles don't <laughs> oh. have access. Really? Not everything's Wi-Fi yet. Oh shit. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, um, just little PSA. Everyone, stick around after the cast. Has some fun with us. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Adam, my friend. Yeah. Let's start yeah. this week off with you. Okay. What have you been playing? Most recently, uh, about 20 minutes ago, I was playing some Rocket League, <laughs> which is not really conversational. Uh, before that, I played a little bit more Hollow Knight, which I hadn't played. I haven't touched Hollow Knight in probably two weeks, so I, I played a little more of that, explored around a little bit, still having fun. So is it still it's uh, such holding Such a gorgeous up? game. Yeah, Absolutely. It's, right. it's a gorgeous game, and I can tell that there's going to be a lot to it. It's not something that you can finish in four or five hours. There's, there's a <laughs> lot to explore and to do. It's definitely pretty deep. Good, because to me, sometimes, uh, from what I saw the game, platforming games, granted, I know this one's deeper, but like stuff like Super mm-hmm. Meat Boy, I think's fun. Yeah. I'll play for a couple hours, but it doesn't stick. It's not something that I feel I need to play all the You're way through. You're going back well, to and going back to and going well, back to. That's a different well, genre well, almost. Yeah. Like, it's yeah, not, it's very, it's like, very different. It's, it's, very it's different. Not, that's not like an RPG per se. It's just more of like but a... Meat, yeah, Meat yeah, Boy that, would be pure platformer. Hollow Knight yeah. kind of in the Metroidvania. Yeah, well, that's what I was saying. Right. I know yeah. it's not quite the same, but it still has a heavy platform element to it and to me in general mm, anything okay. that has a heavy saying. platform base i tend to bounce off of okay like that's honestly, that's rogue, rogue, rogue legacy i almost bounced off of and i mean mm. granted that it's platformy but it's not yeah i well, can see that yeah it's it's platformy but it's very much you know it's it's not level one level two level three it's very persistent big persistent world to explore that's uh, nice it's a from what I understand, a pretty big world. Um, it's cool, though. It's such a beautiful game. It's so polished. It, they they did a really really good job with that. I'm excited to give it a go. I haven't. I, I have that one sitting in my queue. It's right there. Oh, dude, uh, you. I didn't. I didn't know you bought it. I know you said Whitney played it, but you no, know, Whitney. Uh, I got she it, it. it. She didn't. I don't know if she bought it actually. I'm looking over hmm. at her. Looking over at her. Or was age. she gonna buy it? Maybe. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you I ended were up grabbing it. Me about it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I ended up grabbing it. You were giving it raving reviews. So at some point, I will yeah. play through that one as well. And I am. I'm gonna start streaming that. You once should. In a while. Yes, you need I, to. I haven't played it since then, but yeah. I'm yeah, going to stream some of that. There is two games I've been hearing a fuck ton about recently, and that's Hollow Knights and Dead Cells. I've yeah, been hearing Dead Cells so much so about cool. these two games. That, those, those two were actually the two I was debating on when I, when I bought Hollow Knight. I'm like, okay, I'll get one of these two probably. And I ended up going with Hollow Knight because I already have a couple of roguelikes. And I thought, you know, a Metroidvania would be better for me. And it was. <laughs> so, so speaking of speaking of Meat Boy, uh, Adam, yeah. I, I need you to tell me about mm-hmm. the end is nigh because so, another game from yeah. Edmund, like that sounds some, like something right up my alley. Well, there's yeah, one of two different styles for him though, because Meat Boy, and then you yeah. also have Isaac. I'm I'm a fan of either. Like he is that team is. Well, 
fantastic. They put out Tom, quality have you, work. Have you played any of his other stuff? There's a collection called, yes. I think, The, the Basement, basement collection. collection. Yes. yes. Yeah. I yeah. loved The Basement Collection. Very interesting. Some of those so, games um, were good. I thought some of those games were garbage. But some of those were really yeah. good. Yeah. Some of them were cool. So The End of Night, uh, when did that come out? Was, it, was that out? That's okay, it came not, out on the 12th. Oh, it, it is out? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Where have I been? I, <laughs> it just came out. It came out on the 12th. Because <laughs> he was talking days. about it. Okay. Yeah, he was on Twitter a lot. And actually, that's what made, made me think of it, is I saw him post something. Um, oh, I'm thinking blow. Sorry. So sorry. I bought, I bought yeah. this today, so I don't have a lot of time with it. I played it a little. Um, it definitely has a lot of Super Meat Boy influence. When you play it, you immediately, that's what you think. Super Meat Boy. Hmm. Um, mechanically there's a couple of little differences um it's not as fast as super meat boy okay and you don't have the the wall jump sliding down the wall thing what you have is you can grasp onto ledges so any corner or these little hooks that are attached to the walls you can grab to and then jump far off of oh crazy so it's definitely it's like a slower paced super meat boy but it's not it's not level based like super meat boy is it's actually a world to explore and you've got this home base and you explore out and eventually you get to other places and you can fast travel between them so it's it's a little more uh exploration driven that's Hmm. super interesting I'm, i'm noticing a lot more of these like a lot more of these games that are like kind of speed running based, like they because mm-hmm. there's so many people that watch speed runs and stuff. Uh, this yeah. one sounds it sounds it really does sound just like a a, a really interesting one to watch speed ran speed ran speed yeah. run it could speed, be speed ran it could be yeah. speed ran <laughs> speed ran we're, I would like to see speed a speed runners. run uh, speed runners I'd like to see yeah. a speed run <laughs> speed of ran. this because uh, it, yeah, look, it looks like cool. there's like a lot of unique mechanics uh, visually at least I haven't touched yeah. it but yeah basically all you can do is you can you can walk run whatever you, you play as this little blob guy so he doesn't really have legs so you kind of I don't know scoot across the floor <laughs> oh, okay so you can you can move around you can jump you can grab onto ledges and then you can duck and the button you use for ducking if you if you jump and then you hit that button for ducking it'll it'll force you to fall faster wherever you are so that's you can kind of use that to correct your jump in a way oh okay that's pretty so amazing if, if you you know obviously if you just barely tap the jump button you know he'll jump short and if you hold it down he'll jump higher and then if you find you're jumping too high, you can hold R2, the duck button, and you'll like plummet to the ground faster. Oh, that's so, so cool. It's, it's pretty cool. So I it's, love that. it's a pretty difficult game, um, much in the same vein as Super Meat Boy. Maybe not quite as hardcore, at least in the beginning. Um, hmm. But it's still very difficult. I got frustrated and stopped actually earlier because I kept dying at this one spot. <laughs> I was just like, okay, no, I'm not in the mood for this right now. Right. That sounds that sounds insane. It sounds really, yeah. really cool. Yeah. And it's got a little bit of a story to it. I don't really know what it's going to be. Um, so the first thing you see when you boot up the game is your character in this window on the corner with a live whatever, and he's streaming this game. Uh-huh. And this game is the like an 8-bit version of The End is Nigh. Oh, Oh. So you pl- you huh. actually play right at the beginning, and whenever you hit the part where you die, wherever that may be, then it like cuts off and glitches, and he's like, "Oh no, fuck! Ah, what am I gonna do?" And it was basically there's this big apocalypse, and he was the only one left, and his last favorite game broke on its console, and he didn't know what else to do, so he goes to adventure out in the dangerous world to find a friend. Oh, whoa. and that's the huh. story. Huh. <laughs> that's really so cool. As you, so as you go through, you collect uh, you collect these little what they're called tumors. So in every in every area you get to, tumors. every page or every screen, so to speak, there's a tumor there that you have to get to and navigate through the platforming, and then you go to the next one. Oh, um, crazy! And I think that's how it's going to be as far as uh, advancing through later later levels. I think it's going to be like. Hey, you have to have this many tumors, and then you can get past this part, or you know, something like that. No, does, does, this like a, yeah. does this have like a? Does this have like a like a fighting, struggling against cancer kind of thing to it? Is that what's uh, going on? I don't know. Well, what's the? I mean, this sounds like one of those games, right? 
It has like a. Uh, uh, it's Edmund McMillan. <laughs> so, so no, or it's, I was uh, like, yeah. no, his, probably his stories yes are no. incredibly lighthearted and disturbing. Yeah, depending. Yeah, they're depending. lighthearted, but also dark. Okay. So, so something yeah. like Meat Boy or Isaac doesn't really have like a super deep story, uh, but mm-hmm. some of his stuff in the basement collection actually does have a, a whole lot of personal meaning to him. Hmm. Um, like the the game where you're jumping around and landing on planets, and eventually uh, you you get too big and you destroy the last little planet um that that was his way of saying you know he he feels really alone and depression and people don't like him and other stuff like that uh he's got a a really interesting interview in uh indie game the movie that i highly recommend you you guys go out and watch yeah Hmm. anybody that hasn't watched indie game the movie definitely give that a watch and there's actually a part two oh um Give those both a watch. It's really interesting. Huh. But particularly the first one, I think, was was really nice. I've, well, let's yeah, check I've it never, out. I've never seen them. Really? No. That surprises me. Yeah, it's it's really it, good. Yeah, they talk with Edmund McMillan and Tyrone, the, his partner in crime for Super Meat Boy. They talk to Phil Fish yep. about Fez. Uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Blow's Blow got a little for part Braid. In yeah, and was, was, it, was there another? Wasn't there another one? There was. You say braid, I can't so think it was of, pre-witness. What's the other one? Yeah, it was pre-witness. Pre-witness. Yeah, it was. It was kind of after the whole Xbox Live indie game craze. Yeah, mm. I. I. It feels weird. I really do think Xbox helped bring home some of the indie stuff with the I way. I completely agree. With oh, the way they published that on Xbox Live, it feels weird mm-hmm. to say that from a console being where it really hit hard xbla brought indie games into the mainstream absolutely yeah hmm. and it, well, because it was one of the first platforms well it was really the only platform on console where you don't want to buy 60 dollars games here we got five ten dollar games that are really good yeah come jump yeah. on huh yeah. interesting and that's why i bought the end of nigh because it was fairly cheap and it was from a developer i love and yeah hmm. 15 bucks isn't a whole lot to ask for a game so well, and that's the nice thing about the market anymore. You don't have to spend $60 to get something you exactly. enjoy as long as you yep. know what you like. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, there's so much out there that you can yeah. dive in and out of all day long. Right. Yes. So but to, um, to me, the problem with indie devs, is, oh, I shouldn't say problem. It's just how typically are their niche games are very, this is what this game is for. If you don't like this kind of game, you're probably not going to like this. Yeah, it's, it's not. It doesn't true. have the same triple a polish of where Jonathan blow like to uh, <clears throat> describe it as uh, you know, you, you take, you take this game and then you sand off all the rough edges or anything that someone doesn't think, think is perfect or doesn't line up with their worldview. And then you're left with this really smooth thing without any imperfections, but really with no character either. And that was mm-hmm. his problem with, you know, because he came from the triple a industry. That was his problem working in that industry is you take something with a lot of soul that does have flaws, and then you're left with something that's uh, very produced at the end. Yeah. Well, my big thing is that indie games are much more, this is what we are, and if you don't like it, you just don't have to buy yeah. it. Yeah. Where right. AAA yeah. AAA games... They, they can take the risks. Yes. You don't have to play it safe and try to appeal to everybody. They can do exactly what they want, whether anybody likes it or not. Right. And if they do, awesome. And if and you if don't like don't, Super Meat Boy, matter. then, right, then exactly. fuck you. Right. <laughs> no, re- no, exactly. no, really, really. Yeah, no, we're You're saying that. absolutely wrong objectively. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you don't like Super Meat Boy, just get the fuck out. Yeah. You should at least be able yeah. to enjoy it. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, um, but yeah, you had another uh, one on that you've been playing exactly, that I've never yeah. heard of. What is I've, 140? I've talked about this. I've talked about this before on the cast, actually. So 140 is a game I've had for a long time. It actually came out. Uh, like four years ago or so and it's a really simple minimalistic music and rhythm based platformer okay yeah and I yes i said that right and i, I believe i've described <laughs> this to you guys basically <laughs> yes so, every, yeah you have to collect these little orbs to get to the checkpoints and everything in the level kind of moves with the music and every time you get an orb and it like kind of advances through something gets added to the music and you know it all kind of works together it's a really cool experience but this game just got an update after four years 
with a new fourth level added to the end of it. So I booted it up to check it out and realized I never beat the third level, so I didn't get to see the fourth level. And I got stuck on the third level. And now I have no idea what the new content <laughs> is. <laughs> but I love, I love the, the PC gaming market because you have those games that you played a long time ago that get this update and all of a sudden you can jump back into it, you know, thinking that you were done with it. Uh, another good example of that is Terraria. Um, I can't remember how long ago it was that we played that, but we um, played a lot of Terraria for a while. And we got pretty far into it. And then, what, uh, two years later, they had this huge update. Monstrous. And they added all this stuff. Like, they added a whole bunch of end game stuff, new items, just crazy stuff. And we all jumped back into it again. We had like eight people on a server playing, and we got to the end game, and it was so cool. And, it, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it increases the longevity of game. As well as that kind right. of game serves itself very well where you can just kind of build what you want and just in entertain yourself. They give you kind mm -hmm. of the playground. Right. Yeah. The, the sandbox genre. Yeah. Right. And those, B I the mean. The builder. Yeah, the builder. There's so <laughs> many of those for so long. It's, it's unique to see one like Terraria last so long. Mm -hmm. Well, it's great to me because I thought it was funny. Starbound, when it was first announced, it looks great. And everything I've heard, it, it is a very, very well done game. But Terraria was done. The developers were done with it. So everyone's like, okay, Starbound's a new thing. And then it right. just felt like they were like, you know what? We're not going to let you take our genre. And they came back, put out this huge patch. Adam was just talking about an eight, or eight Starbound's breakfast. I mean, oh, they really? just destroyed them when it came to that because it was just such a huge update and everyone jumped back to Terraria for it. Because that game is just any little bit added to it, people flock back to play. Like, I just recently yeah, spun up a server to check out the new stuff. Yeah, how, 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 uh, how far have you guys gotten into that, by the way? Um, not very far. We're, they now offer two different ways difficulties work. You have character-based mm -hmm. difficulty and world-based difficulty. Character-based hmm. is what you drop when you die or if you're permanently dead. And world-based is the difficulty of the monsters and the loot they drop. So, okay. of course, me being me, I put it to the harder difficulty of the world because I want the loot. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so greedy, and, so greedy. <laughs> uh, myself and Epoch were getting utterly destroyed early game super early game because holy shit it's hard to mine and stay alive <laughs> <laughs> but we're just now getting to the point where we're getting some of the core armor sets spares of them done and everything okay, um, about cool. to spawn the first boss oh nice so you're nice. You're, you're you're making it through you're moving yes. moving along <laughs> and anyone who wants to jump in this is an open server anyone can get in just ping oh it's pseudo open um, ping me and I'll give you the info. You can jump in. The server's up 24 by 7, except for when we're casting. Yep. There you go. According to Discord, you are playing Terraria always. The always. <laughs> Never. Yes. So, always. Except for so, right now, for some reason. Yeah, because I shut it down for casting. the cast. Right. <laughs> so just so everyone knows who's ever interested, Terraria, they in, or implemented a Steam server host thing where you through Steam, as long as you're on and playing, people can join you now. It was great. It used to not be there. Hmm. But Terraria oh. also has a second executable in its folder specifically for starting up a server. So it's oh. not the game launcher. It's a server launcher. And by launching hmm. that, you can keep the server up while you don't have the game up. It hmm. works great. Steam allows for it. However, Discord thinks you're still playing the fucking game. Yeah. But Which is crazy. Fine. So it's there. I mean, for the dedicated server software, is there like a Linux build? Can you, can you stand up like a, a cloud server somewhere and, and run this on something that's not your desktop? I don't know if it has Linux. And so, I think that's the big showstopper. Yeah, because a, a Windows cloud server, mm -hmm. those tend to be a little more pricey because you have to pay the Microsoft tax because you're, you're running Windows. Hmm. But like if, if we could stand up like a cloud server, I've got several servers that are like five bucks a month. You could even find them cheaper than that where we could just throw the executable in the, the world data and call it done. Yeah, we'll have to look into that. Yeah. That'd be fun. But <laughs> either way, that yeah. is Terraria. <laughs> <laughs> 
Which I haven't played this week, but I should have because that, that actually sounds pretty fun. It's always a good time. I'll have to, ju- I'll have to jump into that server. Um, the last game I played, Golf With Your Friends, we played it the last last week's community game, postcast extravaganza. That game's a lot of fun. That was that's a blast. A, that's a, it's a charming little game. Very simple and very difficult. And yeah, if you can get if you can get a bunch of people together in Discord playing, it's it's a lot of fun. It's one of those games though. Like as soon as like it's amazing the first time you play with all of your friends, yeah. it gets yeah. progressively worse the <laughs> more someone else plays it and no one else does. So like if there's one person yeah. just amazing at it, granted like you know I think Dark Dark Soul was the one that did really good, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. but he wasn't but, just but easy it, stopping no, 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 no. But the But like, time. I mean, at the same time, it was good. Like, it was fine. That was fine. But like, we all kind of sucked globally. But like, after like uh-huh. forty times through playing that game, and everyone's like tryharding, that game gets instantly not fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, and yeah, the great thing true. is, you turn on collision mode. Oh, collision mode! Yeah. Oh <laughs> my god. <laughs> It's Jesus. amazing because you, you get someone like setting up this perfect shot and then you just fuck them over. You just oh, ruin their entire day yeah. and it's beautiful. <laughs> I saw Winnie so do that to somebody. It was really funny. <laughs> I wouldn't call golf with your friends a novelty game necessarily, but I would call it a party game. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. It's, and it's a cheap one. So it's definitely worth picking up if you haven't played it before. It's really fun. I mean, it's probably one of the better mini golf ones out there on Steam for a reasonable yeah. price. And they keep updating it, which is nice. Like they keep putting uh-huh. out new content. It doesn't seem like it's very rapid, but like the last mm-hmm. time I played it, there was only three maps. I think there's six now. I think that's what I saw when we were going mm-hmm. through them all. So uh, I think we yeah, only think so. played the ones I hadn't played. So it was really nice. cool. <laughs> Well, games like that are really nice because the engines there, literally all they have to do is just add some maps. Right. Just lay out the map. It's kind of like a first-person shooter when it comes to that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, other than that, that's pretty much all I've been playing this week. Speaking of creating stuff, Josh has now finally picked up a game I've been eyeballing for like the last (laughs) six months. (laughs) I, I watched you on stream play some of this. Oh, you watched I, me. Oh, fantastic. I did. Okay. Well, I that's didn't get cool. a chance. I was at work. Oh, no, it, it's, it's exactly what it should be. So it's, Josh, it, how yes. is Planet Coaster? Planet Coaster is great. I used to play a lot of like roller coaster tycoon, like, um, especially like when I was burning through games like crazy, like I do all of these games and then like, uh, I like, ran into roller coaster tycoon. I'm like, Oh, Oh, fantastic. Like I, I'll just, I'll try this game out. And it's, it's just so like, it's so mellow and so fun. I was like, Oh, that's, I, that's exactly what I needed at the time when I was like burning through all these hardcore games. But now like, you know, I come back and I see that, you know, they haven't really put one out, but then planet coaster came out and they're like, Oh, it's like roller coaster tycoon, but like 10 times better. I'm like, Oh my God. So I went and got it. <laughs> <laughs> it it seems just, to me that that planet coaster did to roller coaster ty- tycoon, what uh, city skylines did to Sim city absolutely it's it's really really cool like every like everything from you know how you create your roller coaster down to how you manage your park and then even more so down to like the music and like the audio and the people you see walking around the parks really good really well done just it's just perfect um you have a lot of freedom tycoon dead uh, I don't I mean, know. Is I mean, it's just, a, it's would... just a game, so I don't. I mean, it's, I, it's I not like a, was... it's not like a multiplayer extravaganza. It's just. Well, what like I mean, a, though, I think the last one done was three, and that would have been almost a decade I ago. I want to say there's been like a shitty mobile game. Probably no, mobile doesn't no. count. Yeah. See, well, see, mobile yeah. doesn't count. December 2016. Those aren't real games. Aren't December, real games. <laughs> December 2016. Last... Roller Coaster Tycoon Touch is a free-to-play mobile port of Roller Coaster Tycoon World. Okay, oh, there you go. The, the, the last yeah. one I played was Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. Was, I think, the last Roller Coaster Tycoon I played. I mean, those were all fun. Those were uh, really good. And But this one's just so much better. It, it, it's cool because it really took me back to exactly like what I liked about the games. And... And just kind of the ride of going in and like building this really stupid roller coaster and then just like riding it and having a great time, like for the visual experience, like, you know, just kind of, I'm riding a roller coaster. Whee! 
<laughs> you know and uh, but there's one thing i noticed that I, I totally forgot about and that's like when you go through the challenge modes there's like challenge modes in roller coaster uh tycoon and now in um uh in this one as well uh planet coaster planet coaster has like a whole bunch and they unlock as they go right um yeah and you go into it and some artist has gone through and made like a half built park, but it looks great. Like there's some really, really cool roller coaster in there or like some kind of ride or even just the landscape looks really amazing. You're like, Oh, this is really cool. And like, all right, now all you have to do is add four rides and bring in like 10 guests. I'm like, I can do that. That's going to be great. And you, and you start tacking on all your stuff. And then like halfway through you making your progress, you turn and you look back at the park and it looks like shit. It looks <laughs> awful. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, so, like you just ruined someone's art form. And I use the analogy before of like, like it's like a great painter went in and he's like, all right, I'm making this paint. I, I just don't have time. Can you finish this? And you're there with your crayon. And you're like, I got it. No problem. You go on to your next painting and I'm going to finish this and you stick figure it out and you like scribble in a little bush and you're done. Right. And you're like, mm-hmm. I technically finished the painting and he's like yeah but i mean <laughs> so that's what it felt like, like yeah but- i've s- <laughs> i've watched some people play this game a little bit and it does look like a lot of fun and it seems like one of those you know your first park when you start the game is going to be maybe functional yeah. but it's gonna look really bad right but then everybody gets to a point where they all right well I'm, i kind of know what i'm doing now i'm gonna start a new park and they start you know organizing it right off the bat they start building the paths in a certain way and thinking ahead like okay so i'll build this a certain way so that i have room for all of this stuff on this side exactly then you can get into like the cool parks and stuff right like Like, a food court area instead of littering everywhere exactly that's that's what they did that's what i did in in like roller coaster tycoon that's what i really liked about it going into Mm. uh planet coaster i was like all right that's what i wanted to start with to be honest like that's i wanted to start Mm -hmm. with the empty because i'm like okay I can figure out the controls. I can kind of mess around. I can learn how to build little things here and there. Um, but the only thing I didn't find, and maybe I just just couldn't find where it was located, was a uh, way to do a empty park from the start, but not have unlimited money. Oh. Oh. So, like, the only thing you have a couple sandbox options, and those ones, they all start you with unlimited money. So, I'm like, oh, that's great. But, like, I really would just like to start with, like, a base amount where you guys think, like, a rough mm-hmm. idea. Like, like, I don't know, give me, um, you know, 20 grand and I'll start. You know, that's not, yeah, you know, think, that's enough to build a roller coaster in a, I in think a there is a mode like that. I, I, I'm pretty sure there is there a mode like that. There has to be. And I might have to unlock it. I don't know if you I have to unlock what? it or not. You saying that makes me think. Actually, the original Roller Coaster Tycoon didn't have that either. However, you got five scenarios to start with. One of them was an empty park, but it was a challenge mm. mode. It wasn't just this do what you want. Right. Hmm. And that's and like mm. the ones I've gone through so far all have like pre built. So it's like you have it looks like you start out with like three like worlds, I guess you can call it. Mm-hmm. And each world has like a, a challenge, a challenge park, and each park has three challenges to it. You know, and and you have to go do them. Usually, they're like kind of a sequential thing, like bring in this many people, build this many rides, and it's like mm-hmm. two rides, three rides, four rides. You know, like one thousand, two thousand, four thousand kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's a lot like that how it's constructed, and um, so I'm hoping that maybe it, as I unlock them all, maybe at some point there'll be one that I'll that'll just be empty, or maybe I'm just like maybe it's just like right there is a big giant button and my dumbass can't see it <laughs> that's very likely the case so does yeah. planet coaster on your so far experience have the ability to go unlimited cash kind of like planet coast or uh, roller coaster tycoon 2 did where you actually charge per ride based on excitement and just put atms everywhere for fuckers to keep getting money out <laughs> yeah you could do <laughs> you can charge you can charge at the gate just like in roller coaster tycoon so you, you can charge the gate so you can like make every ride free but make it a hundred dollars to get in or something like that um you can see everyone's happiness level you know whether they're you know happy about all these situations like everything's too expensive the lines are too long all that stuff but it's way more manageable so like you going into like the park management aspect of that game 
is it's really good. They have all sorts of little windows that are really easy to read. Um, they show you the happiness level of your employees and you can, you know, train them up and all of that, uh, give them raises. It's really, really cool. And that's good. I like to see that because the sim games have came, not like the Sims is in the people, but simulation right. type games have came so far since the Roller Coaster Tycoon model was created. It's mm-hmm. nice right. to see maybe some more advanced sim models come into a Roller Coaster Tycoon game. Right. I, I did see uh, like when you were building one of your coasters, you can heat map the coaster for yeah. uh, excitement and nausea. Right. So if you click on heat map, you can actually get hot spots of the most exciting and most boring parts of your roller coaster. That is awesome. It's nice. insane. That's cool. Fantastic. That's such a good feature. So it, it's <clears throat> insane. There's so much, there's so much depth. Uh, you're saying, Tom? Um, so how much was this game? That game, um, I, I got it on sale. And actually, technically, I got as much on sale as one can humanly get have and that is free because uh one of my good friends one of my good (laughs) friends uh dave uh gifted it to me because he's such a cool guy like that awesome steam says it's 44.99 it's it's full price game yeah that's not bad though when you get there sounds very full feature it it doesn't sound like it's it's really good and there's like downloadable content for it and then the best part about it that i haven't even got to is really just you can go out and download people's roller coasters. So like people that are way yes. better at it than you, you can Sweet. go and ride their rides and go to their parks. Yeah. And if you've ever looked at any of that stuff on YouTube, it's absolutely insane. Can, can you do the roller coaster do. tycoon thing of, uh, and this might've been Sim theme park where you can do first person riding yes. the rides. Yes, yes, you can. Every that's ride a must. and everything. That, that's really a must. Three. Yeah. I, I, I really, I really want like that with VR support. I thought it did have VR support. I'm going to Google it? this. I'm oh going to Google God. this because I don't <laughs> this want might to be, be wrong. an instant buy. Yeah, well, the one thing you <sighs> did say that kind of caught me off guard is, is there paid DLC currently? Um, there is DLC for it, but I I don't think it's paid. Hmm. Okay, I, think, I was going to say having paid DLC for an early access game. No, no, it's all it, it's all like there's there's stuff that's been coming out. That keeps coming out more and more and more, and uh, it it like there's but there's no paid DLC. It you just get that's, it. That's still okay. early access. That's yeah. insane. Huh? That that's really surprising. Is it that really? Didn't, it didn't, didn't look like that. an early access game. Well, no. it, it hasn't launched yet, has it? I, I thought it was still early access. Let, uh, let's, I let's don't find see this out. any badges. It's not saying anything about early access on Steam. Well, I think then it's, it's, okay. it's, it's, yeah, then it's that's launched a then. Game. I'm sorry. I didn't yeah, realize it okay. already launched. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> so I, I have this bad thing where I, I remember games when they're early access and I follow them slightly, but I never hear when they actually officially launch because anymore mm. that's so nebulous that it, and it just doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. That's, that's it one really of the, does. It doesn't, doesn't matter, matter if you're early access or not. <laughs> I, I know I've, I've said this on the podcast before, but I, I feel like I should reiterate. That's one of the big bad things about going early access is that, you know, like your, your release date used to be this big magical moment of, okay, I know Splatoon is coming out in six days. I have to get ready because that's Splatoon day, right? Planet mm-hmm. Coaster had a launch date of, I don't know, sometime because everyone's already playing it. And I've, I've run into games where they've been early access. I get them within like the first two months that they've been out. The game's like, eh, okay. I see what they're trying to go for here. It's okay. I'm never going to play this again. And then I never go back to the game even after it's finished. Like prison architect was amazing and they've added so much stuff to it, but I have never gone back to it. I think it's interesting because like you said, there's not this big, you know, big deal release day thing. All the people, you know, release day comes and, you know, pretty much everybody is just playing it anyway. Release so day is release just an date, update. Basically, at that point, it's you're considering it stable and now you don't have the early access excuse for any bugs that people bring up and you can raise the price a little bit. Right. <laughs> other, other than that, you know, that's... Uh, and I don't see anything wrong with that. Because to me, you're going early access. It's not going to be like the new Mario is going to be early access because that's an established franchise. They don't Mm -hmm. need people to buy in early. They don't need to work on it like that. Early access typically, I feel, is help us find our bugs. Help us make sure that you're actually interested in something like this. I don't see it as like like a purely bad thing, but I, I think... 
for for we've got so many damn games. I mean, right? Look at any of our Steam libraries, and over half of it is unplayed, Ooh, guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> and and you know, with with these early access games, we will play it once. We'll go, okay, I guess that's okay, and it'll actually get finished between the time that we find literally anything else to play, and we will never go back to it. So I, I feel like the developers are are kind of robbing their players of the full experience by going early access to their own detriment, right? It doesn't hurt us any. Well, I disagree. I don't, I, I, I don't, no, I don't agree with that. I would, what I would say, what I would say is what's, what's good about it is the fact that you're getting it out there. Like some of these things, like I didn't play planet coaster when it was in early access. I knew that it existed, but I was waiting, but I saw a bunch of stuff that people were producing for it. And I've produced like things that people were doing for it. And I kept seeing, kept seeing, I'm like, Oh, this game is getting really good. Look at all these crazy things people are doing. And then I finally pulled the trigger. Now this isn't a new game. This has been out for a while. Um, you know, and I was watching it as it was early access. Now it's now that it's clearly fully released. Um, you know that that's what made me go for it. So mm-hmm. the initial people, the, the initial investors, the people like initially buy the game. Yeah, they kind of get screwed a little bit because sometimes, but that's only their fault. They didn't go back to it. You know, right, like, yeah, oh, that was right. cool. Like for instance, like Seven Days to Die was a game that me and my wife played a lot together. But we played it when it was like super early access like like when they first put it out and then we're like oh this is fun and it was a little, little really glitchy and like <laughs> really kind of lame and then we recently watched someone streaming it and they're like is this this is seven days Zubble. to die like, this, like, this looks <laughs> nothing like seven days to die that we played you know so then we kind of rekindle it it's a lot like i mean probably like terraria you know think about it like that it's the same concept they you know it was at one stage at one time and then you get re uh you know uh introduced to it at some point mm-hmm. and someone goes like yeah. oh have you played this game like i played it a long time ago it sucked you should play it now all right let's play it now and then the yeah. you know hilarity ensues that's um, that's a good point because <laughs> something like <laughs> minecraft right when i jumped on minecraft it was something entirely different from what it is today oh yeah yeah, yeah absolutely and honestly yeah. i feel a lot of the bouncing off early access though is something that you would probably bounce off of even if it was full featured I mean, right. like Kerbal yeah. did not change much early access to non early access. They added a story mode, but the core of that game has not been changed since that very early alpha that they let people play for free. I mean, I don't know if that's 100% true because I've, I've seen that game specific. Specifically, I've seen their update, their update logs and all their patch notes, and they did a lot no, no, to no, that they, game. They added options but like you're getting different booster types you're getting different frame types but the actual game it's still like you still have the staging the same the launches are the same the biggest update they did was give you um horizontally taking off or horizontal landing and takeoff vehicles okay i think is the biggest thing they added to that but uh, yeah, I just yeah. think that a lot of the bouncing is something. It's not because of early access, just because people are bouncing. Yeah. Like, honestly, I've went back to Prison Architect since it's been launched, and I still just kind of bounced. It's a good game. I just bounced. Right. Now, I can see that. It's basically just going to... Are you going to come back to it? And that's kind of on the developers to make you want to come back. You know, spark enough interest to bring those numbers back to, uh, you know... And I'm sure form. there's there's a huge future podcast group topic in this of what makes a, a game sticky, uh, right? But we'll we'll have to we'll have to research that out and uh, and hit it next time. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Also, um, Josh, you have been playing some of that awesome Crash trilogy. Oh that yeah, I've me heard and everyone. Lots of good stuff about. Yeah, yeah, me, uh, me and everyone's mother, pretty much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you go on, on, like, there was, I was watching a streamer recently, and he was like, he's like, why is everyone playing Crash? Like, I don't understand. It's because we all like, I think most uh, of those people it. grew up on it. Yeah, like it was, like people played, you know, uh, Super Mario, like the, the 3D one, you know, Super Mario World 3D, and. Uh, Mario and then the other people, Mario, Mario 64. God, that was blasphemy. I didn't, that was I didn't, fucking <laughs> blasphemy. But I didn't, and that's and see because yeah, I didn't I have didn't a Nintendo 64. Because my my grandpa had a Nintendo 64, and actually oh, that was the yes. first. That was the first console I ever like played regularly. 
but yeah. I never played Mario 64. When I had my first console, what I played was Crash. That was the first game I ever bought. And that was the first platformer I ever made some headway through. And I'm no longer the only person on the cast that never had a 64 and doesn't really care <laughs> you, about 64 games that much. <laughs> you see, I, I yeah. did backwards because I, I started with the 64 and I mm-hmm. played the shit out of Mario 64. And then I went to Crash and mm-hmm. I, I honestly thought, why is this such a big game? <laughs> why do people care? It's because okay. It's, hard. I, it's it's okay, I guess, because I was comparing <laughs> it to Mario sixty four, which is you know, arguably one of the greatest platformers of all time. Well, okay, so mm-hmm. yeah, it, there there's a thing, and there's a lot of com- uh, conversations about Crash and how and how it was handled. Like Crash is a precision three D platformer. Mario isn't exactly that. Like the speedrunners do that. But it's not in like in all reality. Actually, they did that intentionally. They said that um, a precision 3D platformer, where like a 3D platformer where you have to make precise movements and precise jumps, is not a reasonable thing to do. And I mean, in that isometric, like you're looking down on him and he's jumping around, you know, wahooing all over the place. It's it's an adventure <laughs> platformer, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, and and Mario doesn't require too much like laser focus precision as far as jumping the platforms are all very large um you know you can grab onto walls and stuff you, you it know it's still challenging yeah it mm-hmm. had to be but because crash didn't but crash didn't and, and when crash every like a lot of jumps especially crash one a lot of jumps were like you had to hit it laser accurately and actually if you talk to a lot of speedrunners, crash 2 is one of the their favorite uh games to speed run like you have Mario 64, which is speed ran all the time, but Crash 2 is mm-hmm. is a lot of speedrunners' favorite favorite game to speedrun because it's so uh, it's so precise and you can ruin a run really easily by misjumping, mm-hmm. and you can get and you can hold on to your times really well, and it and it's very mechanical. I would like to see that. Actually, I haven't. I played so much Crash when I was a kid, and I haven't looked at it or touched it or played it in such a long time i would like to see some speed runs of that just to to see the game again oh you know, I'm yeah almost say, uh, i'm almost forgotten almost everything about the game there was a some recent of- boundary break episode uh with crash bandicoot that you should check oh, out was it really yeah so go on go about- on youtube everyone listening uh you know search for boundary break it's a guy that basically adds magic cameras to all kinds of games and shows you how levels are built uh, oh, cool, cool tricks. Uh, Crash Bandicoot in particular, uh, I know a bunch of the developers from Naughty Dog did extensive blog posts on it. It's mm-hmm. a goddamn master's class on how to make a performant, just beautiful game because the PlayStation had no business in running Crash Bandicoot. Sony themselves even said, holy shit, Naughty Dog, how the fuck did you get this to run on this hardware? It's not oh, wow. supposed to do this. Uh, yeah. They were absolute experts at pushing the PlayStation. It's Naughty it's a Dog thing of beauty. is in particular, I mean, they're still doing it. Look at The Last of Us on the PS3. Oh I mean, God, it doesn't make any beautiful. sense. <laughs> it shouldn't oh, look that good. God. That is what happens when you get teams that dedicate themselves to one specific hardware you can do yeah. things for that mm-hmm. hardware that allow it to perform so much better than all these third parties going multi-platform naughty dog mm-hmm. makes playstations dance yeah yes. i mean yeah. crash was this this crash insane trilogy now like moving forward into like from where i was to where i am i i booted it back up and it's the same game it feels the nice. same um the Very platforming nice. like i know that there's there's diehards out there like platforming is like you know my jumps feel off my jumps feel bad i mean the, your jumps were off on the other one like <laughs> yeah. were, it, the other one was hard 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 like yeah. i i remember struggling with certain things like i remember every single like music note and every single jump and I failed at the exact same places really hard and I got mm-hmm. I got caught by the same exact traps again in the exact same way <laughs> so like it's a little discouraging because that means I never got better as a gamer I just like <laughs> it's <still> the same <laughs> wow. but but no no no, no. But but you didn't get worse I didn't get worse this, That's is, important. this is true this is very <laughs> important but um, so far diving into it like it's beautiful they didn't ruin it and that's what I was worried about like mm. they really just did a graphical makeover of it they built it they rebuilt it from the ground up from what I understand oh okay they, it wasn't just like a 
port. Like a re-rendered. Or yeah, whatever. or yeah. a re-render. Exactly. This was a re. Uh, this is totally redone from the it's, scratch. It's so what did they're they planning add... on doing with Shadow of Colossus. Exactly. Yeah. So did they and, add any content, or did they just? No, I don't. Do I didn't notice recreation. any content. The only thing I'd notice is that you can now play as Coco on most of the levels. Mm. So you can play as uh, I think Crash's sister. I think that's his sister. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. But it looks like maybe you could play as a couple other characters if you like. Maybe make it through. Maybe mm. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully that's the case. Because like, that would be cool if you can play as, as like some of the some of the villains, or they're going to add stuff where you can do other things. But mm-hmm. uh, I'm excited to see people speed run uh, Crash Two on the Insane Trilogy. I don't know who holds the uh, holds the records for those, but I'm going to be I'm going to be looking out. Speedrunners so, are inhuman. Oh, I agree. <laughs> I never played a lot of Crash, but am I the only one who thought Spyro was more enjoyable? I also uh, I, Spyro, Spyro was, was really more, good. Spyro it, they're, was they're different, good. They're different games to me, though. Like mm-hmm. Crash Bandicoot doesn't compete with Mario sixty four. Crash is kind of its own thing. Spyro right. competed directly with Mario sixty four. Yeah, right. Exactly. But, but I, I agree. I like Spyro more than Crash. It's a little goofier. It is, yeah, but mean, it's it's also like it gives you a world to explore. It gives you objectives. It gives you characters. Crash. Right. I didn't give a shit about any of that. Right. I'm going to collect as many <laughs> fruits as I can. I'm going to hit some trampolines. I'm going to try not to run into the TNT. Right. That's that's it's, what Crash it, was to me. Exactly. That's right. It's you're just you're just jumping through, uh, maybe collecting boxes, but then giving up halfway through because there's no way you can get to that box. I don't know how anyone could. And then you just <laughs> keep going. <laughs> Crash right? has no no mythos or world building or story to care about. It is pure mechanical platforming. And there's there's a place for games like that. It's it's great. Exactly. It's what Super but Meat it, Boy but is. But it's got that mean scientist guy. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, it does. There the, is in the, cra- super, in the, the crazy in, mask. Yeah. The, the lore <laughs> on, on mean scientist guy. Um, yeah, and <laughs> Spyro, Spyro is all about you know world building Cortex. and uh, yeah, mm-hmm. it was was all about world building and you know not not yeah, really I, story I per se, but it was way more it pronounced was, than in something like Crash. Right, I mean Spyro was great. I love Spyro. Actually, those two games are the ones I played the most. Uh, I played those ones a lot, and then I had because I had like this giant stack, and I played a lot of Spyro. One of the ones I played a lot was Ripto's Rage, and I would have loved to play that one again. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, that's pretty much pretty much it for that. I mean, me and me and Whitney have been trading off on that, trying to see how far we can get, and it's very frustrating. <laughs> yeah, fuck platformers. I don't have time for those much anymore. <laughs> they just make me furious. Yeah, it's nice uh, to have some something to go. Like. It's nice to have something to go back and forth between like Rocket League. <laughs> I, I yeah. mean, just I only have the battlegrounds to like when I rage out on Rocket League. Go to go to battlegrounds <laughs> you always got to have those oddball games you can throw in to kind of change it up from the right. regulars absolutely yeah we'll have to touch on some of this sometimes because i feel that some of us have some really weird ones we like to go to from time to time oh yeah yeah i, I will i will add that to <laughs> our group topics list <laughs> but either way um, games to play when you're sick of other games <laughs> right right <laughs> Tom. Or outside you got a little bit more uh, VR in this last week, did you not? I did. I did. Um, so I went back to my old mainstay and by far my favorite game on the Vive, hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades. Um, which, if Such you guys don't name. know, it's oh, the game is fucking amazing. It is, it is a virtual gun range in Arizona. They've got fireworks. They've got hot dogs. They've got horseshoes and hand grenades. Um, and <laughs> it's, it's not it like, Oh, I'm going to pick up a VR gun and bang, bang, bang. It's I'm going to pick up this VR Western revolver. I'm going to make sure that, that the chamber is out. I'm going to take each individual bullet and load it into the gun. I'm going to spin it and then close it. And then, you know, manually cock the handle back. Like everything is super accurate. It is, mm-hmm fantastic to play but for fourth of july they put out this crazy update um it's kind of spoofing westworld uh the hbo show which is fantastic by the way if you haven't seen it um, i need to watch that still they they call it worst world and uh we can read the show notes <laughs> and it's hilarious uh but you're thinking like w-o-r-s-t no it's w-u-r-s-t like sausages mm. Uh, oh, all of, go. oh god! Uh, all of the characters are running around uh, as sausage people. It's oh, it's that's amazing, <laughs> wonderful. I so, thought you were going to say that all the bullets fired are sausages <laughs> launching out of the guns. <laughs> it's like little smokies coming out of the guns. Yeah. <laughs> hot smokies, red hot. Um, that's amazing. So they've, 
they've got a, a couple little challenges like, hey, you know, find all the hidden horseshoe rings and, and hit them with horseshoes from these platforms, which is way fucking harder than it should be. Um, <laughs> it's a goddamn horseshoe ring on, type, on top of meat henge, which is exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> Um, and you have oh to stand God. under the meat and throw over another sausage and then hit the thing on top of the other sausage. It's just, it's sausages all the way down. It's a sausage party. <laughs> it's, yeah, it sounds the worst. Uh, it sounds the worst. Sounds I amazing. Get I get it. Okay, yeah, we have lost all so, of our followers. Oh Everyone is unsubscribed. I'm we need so to make slow. a penalty box like on one of the sports shows, <laughs> Levitard Show, and put Adam in the penalty box for that contribution. <laughs> we do. Just ban Adam for 10 seconds. Okay, so so there's like little puzzle things, uh, but the thing I liked is you can walk up and grab a deputy badge and pin it to yourself because you've got like these ammo slots where you can put guns or ammo but you add the deputy badge to one of these slots and your job is to go around town and hunt the bandits so i've got like a lever action shotgun like the whole you use your your dominant hand and like rotate it forward to cock all the shells and oh I'm that's so probably- cool Oh, it's, it's amazing. So I've got a badass rifle. I've got my six shooter and I've got a shotgun loaded with uh, like one shot that does like Murica confetti because it's 4th of July and I, I want the bandits to know I'm coming. Uh, and then the other fill with buckshot. So I'm running around fighting off bandits, ducking behind boxes. They've got like machine guns and shotguns all while Western music's playing in the background. It was <laughs> so much goddamn fun. Your objective is to kill the main bandit, uh, one of which is wanted for putting ketchup on steak. You collect their hats <laughs> and you throw it in a box <laughs> for a great. bounty. As that that is penalty, penalty by death. Though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. By far. Oh, by yeah. far. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's so much goddamn fun. It is <laughs> fantastic. I love that game. Um, yeah, so I've, I've been playing some of that. Uh, we actually, we had a 72 pin connector first where, uh, we made fun of Nintendo for showing something in their commercial. Okay. (sighs) Okay. So backdrop, (laughs) let's rewind (laughs) about, let's say 10 months ago, the Nintendo live came out. The first ever ad for the switch is released and everyone is laughing. Ah, it's a rooftop party. Who the hell is bringing a Nintendo switch up there to play it when you're out there with friends? God damn it. My fast forward 10 months. So, so last night we had a rooftop party, a literal (laughs) rooftop party where, where we cooked some burgers and and we had some dessert and drank some beers and then busted out our Nintendo switches. It was playing Mario Kart, Mario Kart on the roof (laughs) with the Seattle sunset in the background. Off oh, of man. the wireless, Gorgeous. Uh, switch to switch wireless networking, it worked flawlessly. Yeah, it was great. Really? Nice. It was fantastic. Now, I, I will say, I will say, Irk's team won by two points in in our two. four four race Mario Kart battle because Gene and I are superior. I'm Fair not going to go that far. I'm going to say you got lucky. <laughs> we won. We're superior. I got Anyways. hit by three red shells in a row. One of which is l- my own teammate. Get He's good. a lucky. Oh no. <laughs> Okay, either way. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we had a, uh, a rooftop Switch party, which was wonderful. And the wireless play on the Switch is so goddamn nice. I miss System Link. I wish more things would do that. I, I know it's not needed so much anymore with everything being online, but mm-hmm. we were out of Wi-Fi range. We're on a rooftop. It's nice to we're have that, burgers. Yeah. It's nice mm-hmm. to have that option. That's was, really cool. And it's it really nice great. that it works flawlessly like that. I mean, it was yeah. literally like I clicked it, and then it's like, oh, would you like to start up a room? Yes. And then all of a sudden, Tom can find the room. There was no like oh, wow. connect. There That's was no crazy. connect to each other explicitly. It just kind of sent the signal out, and whatever switch can see it, yeah. join password protect if you want. Yeah, it That's was great. It was fantastic. And, here, um, and then and then you had Dark Souls one at one point for the PC port trying to connect to literally anyone. Impossible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> oh, yeah. yeah. So um. Other than that, I, uh, I finished Shovel Knight, uh, and my final review is it is the most pristine love letter to 8-bit gaming I have ever seen. Uh, I'm going to go through both of the DLC campaigns now. Uh, it's everything from the music to the graphics to the way the end battle was just completely reminiscent of Mega Man. Uh, mm-hmm. It was fantastic, and it was, it was the perfect amount of difficulty. It forced me to get good. <laughs> without throwing the switch out of the bus. Yeah. yeah. That's good. No, like Shovel Knight never made me feel that way. Cause every time I died in Shovel Knights, like 
there's occasional bullshit 8 bit deaths like what the fuck that flying firefish came out of fucking nowhere and now I'm dead like that that shit's annoying but ma- the majority of the time when I died it was my fault because I was trying to rush cave story fuck cave story I think I'm <laughs> at the very last part of that and I cannot beat this game because oh just the last little corridor or the corridor I'm stuck on at least it's just it's insta kills the whole way through and if you fuck up even once you're, you you got to go all the way back and go through this level. I oh, fucking cave story. <laughs> Someone needs to get good is what it sounds like. Oh, God, it's it's just it's a good game. I really, really want to beat it, but it's just impossible. Um, other than that, I've been playing some CSGO. I like CSGO. You, really? It's it's I, I, kind of, I don't know. Why you don't strike me as a CSGO kind of guy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. So, so I, I love CSGO and what I've been doing now is like, I, I watch some gaming YouTube channels and if I want to like veg out, I'll fire up some medium bots. So they're, they're not hard. Um, I'll, I'll play the, the playlist on YouTube and I'll just sit there and, you know, listen to the guy drone on, on YouTube while taking out bots. And I did that for like an hour and a half today. It was really relaxing. Huh? Huh? It was great. It was a good relaxing time. murder. Yeah. It was relaxing to- murder. I always opt to surf if I'm going to do something like that. That's what oh, I used yeah. to do. <laughs> Just Good a lot surf. of CSGO surf. <laughs> is is there Go Surf? I haven't seen Go Surf. There is Go Surf. There is oh, Go Surf. Shit. And it's so good. I haven't saved. I'll send you some. I, I, was, spend... I was shit at surf. Oh, man. I, so I enjoyed fun. playing it. Yeah, surf servers are, are my favorite <laughs> for sure. Actually, it's really funny because I only ha- I have a certain amount of hours in CS:GO, and all of those hours are on surf. So someone said like, <laughs> recently, they're like, "Oh, you can't be that bad." I'm like, "I've only done surf. I'm not even ranked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even, not play even the game ranked the way it's intended to be played. I only play <laughs> I, the, I've never the played. community modded weird. Uh, you know, I, I never play ranked because I never mechanic version. Like <laughs> it's it's that thing of that I had in Dota 2 it's like oh my god I'm I'm committing to a ranked match like if right. if I absolutely hate this I can't just leave right. I don't want to be that guy I, I think we I think we were going to play one time and we accidentally queued into ranked and I had yeah. some Russian guy yelling at me and I'm like I'm sorry I don't remember what <laughs> button it is to defuse <laughs> the bomb oh man <laughs> me, me and RS me and RS went uh, went ranked in CSGO and it was so bad. It was so... I, I am not great at CSGO and RS is also uh, not great at CSGO and we went in and made the lobby pissed. <laughs> pissed. <laughs> they were not happy. They don't take lightly. Yeah, no, I, I decided... No. I, I always cheese in CSGO. Like, I always get shitty weapons. Um, mm-hmm. So, I... I got a deagle and i was like yeah fuck yeah i'm gonna deagle my whole way through and i was playing ranked with my brother and he said dude just please use a real gun and i said no i'm deagling he said no use a real gun or i'm kicking you so oh, jesus christ <laughs> like, he, he took noob. this shit seriously <laughs> clutch or kick oh i clutch always fail kick, clutch or kick i always, always fail clutch, clutch or kick. kick yeah i avoid that because i just suck um, <laughs> yeah. so yeah other other than you know chilling out with some casual murder in csgo um Irk and I jumped on a, a daily event that we were playing up until the very beginning of this podcast, the Splatoon 2 global test splat fest thing. But the real battle going on here is cake versus ice cream. Now, Irk and I chose correctly on the side of ice cream, but we're going to pose the question to you two, cake or ice cream? What? Which, which? I mean, ice, ice cream for me. Okay. Ice cream. Yeah. All right. All okay. right. Good. Good. Yeah. So we're we're all unified here. Team ice cream. So, the so next question: cake or death? Uh, cake, please. Yeah, probably cake. cake yeah, very cake, well. Cake, yeah. Absolutely. Cake. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so uh, earlier, so earlier that wasn't the hardest. That wasn't the hardest question I've ever been asked. <laughs> er, earlier in the week, um, I had I was looking through my Amazon orders. Mm-hmm. I was like, mm, I've pre-ordered something. That's that's bad karma for me. I, I never. I never pre-order. Pre-ordering is bad. Get I, off I don't, your soapbox. I don't know what I'm going to get. Oh. I don't know what I'm going to get. Nintendo could take a dump in this box. And they're like, well, you didn't know what you were going to get. We just shit in a box and <laughs> send it to you because you already paid for it. You paid for something you have no idea if it's good or, good or not. And so I canceled my well, pre-order. Uh, I, I 
have just re-upped my pre-order uh, not, <laughs> not even an hour ago because I played so, the Splatfest and it was great and it's game demos and I remember why game demos are so important because now I know that I can buy something and I'm going to love Splatoon. Yes, but that game demo, this is the second one. I didn't have a Switch because there were only three of them in existence. Yes, but all the reviews you, all the reviews you say you want to hear have been out. You could have read them. Everyone has been saying this plays good. Yeah, but at the same time, like you didn't play. Everybody it. could I be mean, wrong. Remember, remember, like when they used to have, like you had the Game Informer magazine or whatever, and it came with a disc inside. Oh my god, oh, those were so great. Play, I had like, PlayStation magazine that's, and. Go ahead. I subscribed to PlayStation that's, Magazine only for those yeah. discs. That's yeah. how I got into yeah. Gaiden exposure. Yeah, I had a stack of those discs. More like I had more of those than I had games. And I think most of my playtime was on those demo discs instead of actual games. I played and, and I played Twisted Metal for the first time. Twisted Metal, the first yeah. one for the first time, one of those demo discs. I played. It, yeah, I was so probably many games. Parappa the Rapper. Yeah, Parappa. Uh, I'm, I'm there was probably, a game called Intelligent Cube. Oh, that Tom? was good too. I was, I was probably, I'm probably like making the case against ever putting out a game demo for anything ever again. But mm -hmm. on some of those discs, especially like the open world stuff that just says, Hey, we're just going to give you a really limited open world and end it after two hours. I opted to play the demo over and over and over again, and I never bought the game. <laughs> yeah, like, that's like fine. The, that's, the, that's fine though, because it's like it, that's what it that's what it's supposed to do. It means like don't make shitty games. <laughs> you know, well, it's like, NX, well, NX no. versus ATV. <laughs> yeah. they, they gave you like thirty minutes out in their open world where you could just ramp off a shit and like hit a train or whatever. Right. And right. I played that. I probably put 10 hours into that game and I never bought it because the demo was just fun enough. And, and I mean, that's, that's I, the reason you don't put out game demos because of <laughs> shitty people like me. <laughs> but I played it and I actually did buy that game and it had way more. And there was so much to do with all, like there's so much to do in that game when you actually started, when you actually got into MX uh, versus ATV. It was like so much, it was so much fun. I was actually really disappointed that the later ones were kind of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I have put in a uh, a Splatoon two demo, uh, but I do or a Splatoon two pre order. But I do have to say, um, I don't have to. The reason I want it is because I want it on day one. But Amazon gives you this really nice uh, Prime benefit that uh, if you want to pre order the game and get the pre order discount up to two weeks after the game has launched, you can do so. <laughs> so you can still oh, get good. a big the ass. The game's out. It's time to pre-order. Oh, okay. I got, I got Tom, a question. Tom okay, it's ordered. Because Tom's now coming back to consoles for yeah. the first time. This is what I've been doing with the PlayStation and Xbox stuff that you always yell at me for getting physical media, and this is always what I tell you. I, it can be cheap. I had no idea. I, bought, I, I now have Splatoon 2. Because you'd rather complain about it than find out. I ha now have Splatoon 2 for, for $47. I didn't know that was possible on day one. I've told what? you that, and you've told me you heathen go digital. What? I, I don't even. <laughs> so I, I now regret buying ARMS digitally for 60 bucks. although I'm, I'm growing to love ARMS the more that I play it. It's, it's a good game. Mm -hmm. I can see it getting really technical. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. The online is fantastic. Everything else is forgettable. So one thing I will say about well, this Splatoon 2 demo, I want to bring it back to that a little bit. It's weird. This is the second one, and I think they got it wrong this time. So... Oh. They, they still windowed it like before to get the player bases together, but you choose ice cream or cake and they try to match all the ice creams against the cakes. But there must be such a huge imbalance to ice cream to where you have to wait into time out on the matchmaking and then it'll just throw you against ice creams. That that has always been that's the case. Because for ice cream is better. Well, it's always been the case. Uh, that wasn't that way in the first demo. Yes. No. Oh, oh, in the demo. That's, that's, right, what, that's right. what I'm telling you. Yes. This happened to this. They had it going great in the first demo. That was a test fire. That's that's just standard battle. This is a splat fest. It is. It has been uh, every splat fest on the Wii U has been okay. We're going to pit A against B, and if there's not enough B to go up against A or vice versa, we're just going to do the same team versus the same team and not count the points for the splat fest. So the way a splat fest works is um, if you uh, basically win more matches as ice cream or cake, that becomes the winner. 
And I, I don't know what happens after that, but you know, ice cream wins. Well, a lot Congratulations. Of a lot of games do that. Like there's a pick your faction stuff and then right. you just go on and play your game like normal and they tally up the faction points. Well, yeah. um, tomorrow is National Ice Cream Day. So they were probably just in preparation for that. And there's an overabundance of ice cream teams. Uh, yes, there you well, go. but uh, it's just you have to wait almost two minutes. And because of this. Oh, I have not had to wait that long. I I've had. It, I've had 40 seconds. I've had a 110 <laughs> second timer run down, reset, and then pick up ice cream players. Jesus. Is, are you Damn. sure it didn't have to do with Comcast? No, because we were playing on the same <laughs> network. Let's blame this on Comcast regardless. But um, yeah. And the frustrating thing about that is it prevents us, I think, from partying up together since we didn't have a full squad. We couldn't pick up players or go against people. So we couldn't play together in this. I don't yeah. know if that's because of the structure Weird. or they just had it broke. I don't know if we were doing something wrong. So we went into a team. We made our own lobby. We got in the same lobby. We're both readied up. And it just says waiting for team ice cream to be ready. And it just sat there. I think we waited like three minutes. Yeah. And nothing hmm. happened. So we're both backed out and opted for solo battles. But I don't want to play that one. I want to play Splatoon with Urk. I want to play Splatoon with Urk, not Urk and two other random idiots, right? That, that right. we have to add to our team. It's okay if they get added in the lobby. That's the way it's supposed to work. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to have to go and search Reddit or, or Nintendo's forums to say, hey, uh, could we get two others for our Splatoon team? Like that, That's a shitty way to do that. Yeah, but right, I, mean, I do like that they do have a common hub area feel to that. That was kind of nice. Yeah, I, I mm -hmm. mean, it was that way in Splatoon 1 as well. I, I'm just saying I liked, but the one with Splatoon 1, they integrated with the Wii U. For this one, I know I've heard that they've had to pull it strictly into Splatoon because of the stuff ripped out. Like hmm. you, you have the phone app and stuff like that. Right. So it's not everything's on one spot, so you can't use all the technology. To yeah, so. I, so question for you guys, since you did the pre-order, do you guys get any pre-order bonuses? You can. If we, a game offers it, you get it. Like No, so, no, I understand that. I understand that. I'm saying with Splatoon 2, do you get the, any pre-order bonuses? The bonus to pre-ordering Splatoon 2 is that we get to play Splatoon 2. From what I understand. <laughs> so, yes. so, this so, is, so keep this in mind, is, this is, I, an, I hope, this is a Nintendo anyway. game. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of games like in the past, like I think that's a, the the biggest problem I had with pre-ordering on on PC, like just over the internet, is you you always got when you get the physical media, you you get sometimes you get something cool, and mm. I was wondering if I was actually wondering earlier if you guys got anything with your pre-order, um, and that's like like when you pre-ordered Dark Souls, for instance, you got a little figure guy, and I have him up there, but if you pre-ordered it, uh, if you did the pre-order online. You just you didn't get anything. You didn't get anything bonus. So, so I always thought that was really weird. Nintendo proper does not give items for just pre-ordering. They give you bundles you can get to get shit. Like I got the big Zelda bundle. So I got the case, the little figurine, the coin, the map, all that stuff. I regret not mm. getting that. But it wasn't because I pre-ordered. In fact, we went to Walmart. Some guy tried to buy it. He saw the price and found out that wasn't just the game. And then I lucked out and got it because it was the last one. But either <laughs> way, um, Nintendo, you have to buy that. It's not a pre-order thing. Okay. However, in general, with Amazon, if you pre-order, you get the DLC that comes with the pre-order, the cool stuff and all that. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with my pre-order bonus it's, being it's, able to, you know, being the, the game and I get to play the game because that's, that's kind of what I bought. I want, I want the exclusive GameStop pre-order bonus horse armor. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's all like GameStop especially does some crazy stuff. Like, I don't know if you saw the Assassin's Creed pre-order. Yep. I, um, I really like I want all I want a mandatory like countrywide law to be all pre-order bonuses have to be big ass stickers that say my EP is bigger than yours. And that's <laughs> that's the pre-order bonus that you get. Well, you I go. mean, you add an $800 price point for the legendary edition pre-order of Assassin's Creed. I yeah. think you your E P is 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 seriously Pretty bigger. Huge, massive. <laughs> you, yeah. you get a uh, you're getting a pewter statue with that one. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Why, why do why? I don't know. Why but you do. <laughs> like like somebody I, with I a lot it. of money really likes Assassin's Creed. <laughs> I, I understand oh, if they were, pretty if happy they were with doing it bonus. for <laughs> I understand if they were doing it for like a, a good game series. Like, you know, <laughs> 
Yeah, oh, I don't savage. know. Well, I mean, if the series wasn't making money, they wouldn't be making them every ten minutes. So <laughs> well, obviously, they did skip a year. Some they people a like year. it. So yeah, which is nice that they actually skipped a year because holy shit, they were. Yeah, I don't like every year the a little same. Much. Yeah, especially when it's the same team. It's not like um, right Call of Duty where you have two to three teams cycling through. Mm -hmm. But but then, you know, never buy Treyarch, just only buy Infinity Ward. But even Infinity Ward kind of sucks today because it's not really Infinity Ward. It's just the name. Mm -hmm. Well, you have three of them now anyway, but yeah, so it's it's all good. There's the new rule is never buy Call of Duty. And the market seems to be following that, <laughs> amazingly um, enough. I'm going to jump, on the, next, I'm jumping <laughs> on the next one. Well, <laughs> actually, <laughs> this last Call of Duty was the worst selling, the first decline in sales of Call of Duty they've had in recent history. Yeah, oh, but I mean, wow. they still make an ass load of money every time. Yeah, like, yes, it's, not, it's, like, it's not like it's not like four per, four people were like we're the only ones. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. They, they're selling well, but they've fa they've seen their first decline. Mm. Yeah, that's fine. I'd like them to get back to what they were in the past. Some of the older Call of Duty's were actually quite good. Yeah, um, I agree. Honestly, Modern like, Warfare was great. I love Modern that Warfare one. was wonderful. Mo yeah, I'll, I'll even really give was. a pass to like two. Two was really good too. Yeah. Modern they Warfare said two a lot of people consider good. Modern Warfare to the high water mark of the Call of Duty franchise. I that's really a, liked it. A lot it. of hardcore, a lot of, and that's still active today. Like you can go and find some. It's pretty pretty hardcore Modern Warfare two players. As much as hmm. I like it, Modern Warfare two and Black Ops is when it started to diverge into the slightly crazy though. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, I think three was really that that started the ball rolling on the wow, this is getting redundant train. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. I think Black Ops 2 was the last one I actually did, but I'm really excited about the World War Two one. I probably mm -hmm. will end up getting that. I, yeah, launch, I will, I'd like to play it. Yeah, I'll, I'll read the reviews. I, I will surely watch it on Twitch. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's that's about all I've been playing. Um, Irk, I, I know, you know, we played some Mario Kart, we played Splatoon, but we also played a game that we're going to play later tonight. Why don't you tell us about the Jackbox Party Pack 3, the third on the Switch, the sequel? <laughs> what? Hey, wait, what? <laughs> what? The Jackbox third Party trilogy, the sequel? <laughs> yeah, it's the third game of a trilogy in a sequel. What? Yeah, but uh, Jackbox Party <laughs> Pack um shit's fun um so these Sick. games are part <laughs> review, of review, review. Re Duh, shit's shit's fun. Fun. Shit fun on to the next one <laughs> next. sold no but it's actually a really cool game especially being on the switch um granted if you have a laptop with steam it works equally well as it will on the switch um the idea is one person has the game they that game connects into the Jackbox servers and it gives you a code saying, Hey, here's your room code. Anyone with internet access on any kind of device outside of a flip phone, go to this website, enter in that code, and then everyone's in the lobby. So now everyone is playing it just because you own it, right? And they have, I love games that do that. They it have was a shit ton four of different games off of this. The first one, we didn't understand what it was the first time we played it, but oh my God, mm -hmm. it was a riot. <laughs> so you're, you're asked to draw three pictures and then you're asked to make two slogans. That's the first round. And the second round is each person gets a picture and then they say, which one of these slogans goes with this picture? And it's a picture someone drew and two slogans someone wrote and you pair them together and you oh, do so two nice. of those. And then what happens, you just made a shirt design with the slogan. Now they're battling head to head and people are voting <laughs> on them. Oh, that's great. Nice. So Very it's cool. just really fun evolution. Some really funny shit comes up. Um, there's, uh, what was the last one we just did? Uh, Quiplash 2. Yeah, Quiplash is probably the most fun I've had in that game. Oh, um, absolutely. So Quiplash, you are, um, I, oh my God, I just drew a blank. Tom, go. So, so with Quiplash, <laughs> it'll give you, it'll give the group um, a couple different questions. Not everyone gets the same question. Like two people will share a question, uh, and then it pairs off like that. And your job is to answer that question. Like um, one of them, which I, I probably shouldn't say on the cast. Uh, I'll leave the answers out. Um, which uh, was, you know, what is. Um, What's described in the left off book from one of the books of the King James Bible? Um, 
and it just devolved into some of the most blasphemous, hilarious <laughs> shit of all time. And it does a t-shirt thing where it takes the, the two answers that the people put together and makes you mm -hmm. pick which one wins and people will nice. vote on those. It is hilarious. <laughs> and that's the great thing about this. Even if only six people get in and someone jumps in late, they are now part of the audience. They now vote. Yeah. Your score nice. based on percentage of votes you receive. So they, okay. In, in another podcast, uh, Orange Lounge Radio, um, the Jackbox. Jackbox people were actually on talking about Jackbox One. Uh, this is way long ago. Um, and they said they wanted to build a game specifically to get Twitch audiences playing and get Twitch audiences involved. Because, you know, watching is one thing, interacting with chat's one thing, but they wanted something that you could actually play with the people you're watching on stream, and that's why they made the Jackbox Party Pack. And so far, I mean, we'll, we'll see how it works tonight, but it really looks like they hit the nail on the head. Yeah, and they that's even had really cool. two other games that were really fun. One of them was just a random trivia game, which, I mean, I like trivia games, but, I mean, it was run-of-the-mill trivia, just... Yeah played over a way that more people can play except except so one of the one of the challenges was uh you know on your phone draw a map of europe which <laughs> oh, itself okay. itself is a, a nuts challenge right um <laughs> right, and right. I, I think i think it was uh you up against my wife no, wasn't it it was jesse oh okay it was my buddy jesse versus my wife drawing a map of europe jesse drew what looked like a deflated snake <laughs> and, and my wife drew because snakes are inflated by nature. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And now I am, I am biased because I am married to this person. Uh, but my wife drew what was, you know, a fairly accurate map for being drawn on a touch screen. Um, and the, the question was, uh, pick the worst one. And we all just assumed we didn't read it, that we were voting for the best one. So we all voted for, <laughs> for my wife's awesome map of Europe. And then it's, we read it and it says, you know, pick the worst one and we'll eliminate it. We're like, Oh fuck, fuck. So now we have deflated snake Europe. Yes. Oh, guys. Nice. Yeah. It was, it was fucking bullshit, but the, the game pulls out all kinds of weird shit like that to you. It's really read, nice. Read the rules, Tom. Come yes. On. Yeah, you you got to read. And then the very last one we did was a, um, uh, not a trivia game, but a percentage-based game. Well, I guess there was one other one too, but this percentage-based game where it's like, what percentage of people do this? One person guesses, and then everyone else is like, is it higher or lower than what they guessed? Mm. So it's, it's, it's kind of boring, but it filled the space. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's there. It's kind of interesting. It got old after the first round. I didn't want to go back to it. Uh, yeah. One game I do want to go back to all the time was Faker. Yes. Oh my god. So this game would be incredibly hard to do on stream. In fact, I don't think we can. But right. in the room, everyone's given a clue. Like There's five different rounds. One round, you have to raise or not raise your hand. The other round, you have to put up how many fingers correspond to the answer. Another round, you have to point at someone who is the answer. And what happens each round, you're given a question. Like to raise your hand, it would be something on the lines of, I've been in a car accident. And anyone who has would raise their hand. The caveat is, one person is not given the actual question. They're told to <sighs> fake it. Oh, wow. <laughs> it just says on your phone, it just says, hey, raise your hand or don't. Just try to fit in. And at the end, <laughs> what, what's supposed to happen is everyone's supposed to argue about who's the faker and try to point at people and yell at people. Oh, all the timer is counting wow. down for you to vote. It's like Ultimate Werewolf. Oh, wow. Yes, exactly. Yes. That's and it's fun because then the next time would be something, or it, they try to make it easier. Like the second time, it'll be a somewhat weird one. Then the third time, we had one where it was like, <laughs> Raise an odd number of fingers. <laughs> the faker just so happened to lift up five. <laughs> oh, wow. So, I mean, it's re that's a really fun one, but it's really, you could do it on stream, but you would have to make sure everyone has a webcam and everyone can see yeah, everyone. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be well, tough. One, one person in our group, um, we, we had to restart this round because we weren't clear on the rules. One person in our group said, oh, this is weird. It didn't even give me a question here. And we're like, oh, oh come oh, on. No. <laughs> we know who the faker is. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, it's, it's that really that good. Happens. That's it's cool. It's a though. lot of fun. It's it's a whole lot of fun. Um, and all of you curious about it, just jump in after this podcast. Yeah, yeah you can you can yes. play along or you can watch. It's sure to be a fucking hilarious time. <laughs> and, and totally not safe for children, not safe for work. Don't show your grandmother. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we'll we'll be plenty blast from this tonight. Unless your grandmother is just super cool. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. my, my grandma cool can watch. My grandma can watch. Your grandma probably couldn't. They do give like um. Dang, calling our grandmas filters, right now. But um, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We you should don't know me. You don't know my grandma. You, you don't know, know my gr- life. <laughs> you know what, Grammy? <laughs> We should probably mention this. Um, in the options menu of the Jackbox Predator Pack, you can actually turn on like safe for work mode, or I think it's family mode. Yeah, that's what they call oh, it. Nice. So if you didn't want to get anything too raunchy or too weird, you just wanted to have a fun family night of Jackbox, you can absolutely play this in family mode. Make but sure if your that's family is off. fun, you keep it yeah. the fuck off. Yeah, like if, if you've got the <laughs> Bluth family of family members like my family, <laughs> you absolutely turn the safe for work shit off. Man, you were all about making references to Arrested Development the last couple weeks. Same. Same? Shut up. Same. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so. Did somebody say. We have a little bit of news we'll run through here real quick. Nothing too big. It's the dead of summer. So, I mean, there's really not a whole lot going on. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2 announced that they'll be having a beta on 10.6 and open pre orders on 10.4. And by that, I mean October 6th, October 4th. So yeah, looking forward to playing it. I'll get into it. The beta for the first one was fun. So and it was really representative of what the game was. So I'm going to play the beta and then not buy it. Yeah, yeah. same. <laughs> yeah, but probably. it'll be a fun weekend. <laughs> uh, Battlegrounds is doing two things. Uh, they're adjusting field of view, uh, which I think um, could be interesting because that could really uh, if you have better computers, you get an advantage because you can open your field of view more. Secondly, they're standing up first person only servers right that's going to be really interesting i'm really really excited to play that so i I, think i i I do like the third person and i like the fact that you can peek around corners and gain that extra awareness i don't but i also like having the option of the first person to change it up so Um, i'm really really looking forward i'm concerned it'll split the community that that's my biggest concern it's because there's you know you don't you don't have to it doesn't matter in a way like it does because someone can peek you and they can you know they get third person camera you and and take you out that way um i I I think for someone who likes to slow play this is huge because slow play gets killed by alt looking because people can look at you without moving i I think this will be you know the the competitive mode for for PUBG. um you know, in, in Counter Strike, you've got casual and competitive modes, and they're slightly mm-hmm. different. Um, and then here, I think you'll have the first person only hardcore modes, and then everyone else. I don't know if that's true, though, because like uh, I've been watching a lot of streamers talking about this. A lot of, a lot of people that are really into in, into PUBG right now, and that are really into H one Z one. They they're all saying that you know, like they don't care in some regards like they're like oh hmm. uh, well third person is fine like we can de- we deal with that fine and first person is like it, it it's just the big note that a lot of them have been saying is it'll probably split the community and make people like you know oh well, i only play first person shooters so i'm clearly better than you kind of thing and, <laughs> yes uh, but a game that has this much of a community splitting it i don't think it's an issue Ah, we'll there see. are a it's, whole lot of people. I don't think yeah, it'll we'll, be we'll have to an see. issue as far as enough people playing. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, care about but... inner battle or inner bicker. That can happen all they want. So, so player unknown <laughs> said um, it's only coming to EU and NA um, solo and duo games first. Once they've polished it, it'll expand to other regions. Um, okay. So it's it's a pretty limited rollout while they try to work out the kinks. Yeah. So it'll be. Um, Interesting, nonetheless. I'm yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Um, Tony Hawk Pro Skater HD remake. Um, interesting game. It's a remake of the first game, which it sucks. Well, no, 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 no. I think <laughs> it sucks because the first game is beautiful in our minds, and we forget about how bad that actually controlled. No. No, I completely disagree because I busted out my GameCube. I loaded up some Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 and I fucking vert ramped the shit out of that game. It was amazing. <laughs> Go back to one sometime. I was playing one at 18-bit arcade. That shit does not. 
I, age I, well. I thought it was okay. Because uh, I, I also have my Dreamcast with Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1, and it plays just fine. Um, it's, the, it's not beautiful by any means, but it plays just fine. The, mm-hmm. the game feels off. It doesn't control right. It doesn't feel right. Um, the HD remake of Tony Hawk Pro Skater does not feel like Tony Hawk Pro Skater, and that's the issue. Well, either way, it's getting pulled from Steam. Um, mm. It's a trend I think I would like to address at some point in the future yeah. of um, mm-hmm. the fact it has a lot of licensing. We've seen this happen with Alan Wake. Uh, there was another game recently it happened to, and now Tony Hawk's getting hit by it. They lose licensing of the music. The game has to go. Mm-hmm. So that's, that, that that's, is what it is. That's unfortunate for the people who bought it on Steam. Yeah. Well, it stays. You, you don't lose the game. It has right. to go from the marketplace, oh, okay. though. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. And, and gotcha. I, right. Frankly, I think this is, as much as it sucks to anyone who wants to buy it today, and if by the way, if you want to buy it today, it's $2. So Yeah, it's super cheap until it goes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it sucks. But if you want it, get it today. It's $2 fucking dollars. Um, but I, I would rather see a game get pulled for this than what we've seen before, where games that haven't gotten updates on Steam in three or four years, like GTA San Andreas, uh, gets an update from Rockstar that pulls tracks out of the game because they mm. lost the license, right? Going back and retroactively nerfing a game or pulling out features or or music just it ruins the historical integrity of the game. Now, now I would much rather go back and play, you know, a hacked version of San Andreas that I got from the pirate Bay than play the one on steam. Cause I know the one on the pirate Bay isn't gimped by updates. I would rather though, have music taken away from the game than not be able to get access to the game. Well, it's, it's not like, That's it's true. not like they're reaching out into our consoles. Cause I already have GTA. San no, no, Andreas, no, if you have right? it, you're fine. The point is people in the future can't get it. Right. I mean, right. it's literally illegal to sell anywhere. Physical media as well. I guess technically there's probably some caveat with used, but mm-hmm. physical media, new, cannot be sold. I, I would really, as much as I love digital purchases, I love Steam. This is the kind of thing that, uh, you know, the, the crazy people online that are yelling us at us gamers, you know, oh my God, you're buying all this on Steam. They could take it all away one day. You know, some of that shit's happening right now. Right? They're, they're not reaching in and removing our Steam purchases retroactively, but they are going in and Rockstar is removing songs from San Andreas, you know, a game that's fucking ancient at this point in time. And that really sucks. Everyone who bought San Andreas on the PS2, they have the complete game. Us today on Steam with our fully updated copies, we don't. Yeah, and it's it's going to be tricky. It's a new age th- issue, absolutely. And I think maybe this will cause people to think about the way they license music and games. Well, I mean, this music licensing in general is insane. Yeah, right. right. like like just how that all functions is insane, and how so it's it's a really touchy subject that we have no idea about there's so much there's so Mm -hmm. much that goes into licensing literally anything um that i don't even know where you would start to make that okay make that not okay you know i don't know where you would start to say oh here's you know here's infinite uh you can have infinite time with x y and z like like that's what netflix battles with like you right. know, Netflix mm-hmm. constantly battles yeah. with like just licensing of you know the random shitty movie they have on there. Like there's like one random indie shitty movie, and they're like, "Oh, well, your license ran up. No one gets to watch that movie anymore." <laughs> you like know? If, if I'm if I'm an indie dev making a game today, and I'm I'm thinking, you know, oh my god, it's great because I can get you know this awesome synthwave music for my game, and I can I can play a pay a low licensing fee, and have the risk of that license getting pulled or, you know, paying a whole shit ton of money for a perpetual, uh, you know, this is part of the game and you can't ever revoke this license sort of license. Like mm-hmm. that makes me want to, you know, go to people like Adam or other independent, you know, producers of, of music and video game sounds to, you know, avoid this problem entirely. Cause if, if it means that there's a chance that my game will be pulled from Steam or I'll have to go back and rip out pieces of my game because the license ran out, I just don't want to deal with that issue. I want to well, avoid it entirely. Uh, well, check yeah. this out. Like, okay, so I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call on, on, on Dobby here on the cast. Uh, um, 
so Dobby brings up BMX X, BMX XXX, um, that game. So that was actually supposed to be Dave Mira three. There was a licensing issue for Dave Mira. That's why that Dave Mira three never got produced. Oh, I did not know that. So yep. there was there was a huge problem, and and I think it, I, whoever the developer was for that, I totally forget. So, so in mind, but not really that important. Um, they said they weren't going to make another one. They said like, ah, we're done with we're done with Dave Mira two is good. We're we're happy with two. We're going to leave it at that. We're not going to do another one. And they put out BMX XXX, and they didn't even know it was going to come out. And like Dave Mira was freaking out. Uh, <laughs> that's just, yeah, that, that that's just brutal. Like, so you're talking about that as a licensing issue. You're, you're talking about every single aspect of a game is a licensing issue. So yep. that's a big topic for a stream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's huge. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put that down as a feature group topic. Yes, you know, please. A whole, lot of, a whole lot of good future cut podcast material out of this one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we'll get moving on because, damn, it's getting late. Um, Xbox, finally bringing gifting into the Xbox Live store. This is something Sweet. that I was bitching about over 10 years ago. <laughs> and it's finally happened. Like, it was to the point where my buddy was trying to give me some DLC and gift it to me. He couldn't. He had to buy an Xbox Live card and give me the card so I could redeem the code. He actually bought the card sent me the code in an Xbox Live message, and then I redeemed the card so I can get the DLC. <laughs> Such an ass-backward system. They're finally riding the ship on that. You, you think that, you know, when you build an online store, your number one priority is, hmm, how do we get people to spend money, and how do we make that process really fucking easy for them to throw <laughs> money at us? <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm glad it's fixed, but this shouldn't have taken this long. Yeah, but you yeah. Know what? it is. It's a good improvement. But it's there now, or <laughs> um, there was one big piece of news that dropped today. Um, there is now a trailer for Kingdom Hearts 3. Just launched oh, today. Yeah. It is going to be involving Toy Story now, and this game looks beautiful. <laughs> it does. It's gorgeous. So oh, for yeah. those of you who have been a fan Spoiler of... Spoiler wanting- alert, it's a square game. Those of you guys who have been <laughs> wanting one in, or played one and two and been waiting for three for fucking ever, <laughs> 2018 is now the official release year of the game. For now. For now. But for they now. have at least put a year on it. This game has been this huge. We know it's coming at some point. Where the fuck is it? And I remember pre E3, I said they'll announce it at E3. They don't, mm-hmm. but they announced it at some Disney thing. And it's going to be coming out next year finally. Oh, I'm so excited. Nice. I'm so that excited. That was a series of games I never played, but I know there's a whole lot of hype behind them. And people you are might, really into they them. They might age okay. I'm thinking about it right now. They did, an, they did um, a remastering of all of them for the PlayStation, uh, PlayStation mm-hmm. 4. Um, I might actually just get them and play through them. Yeah, because they I, released- I love those. I absolutely love those games. And I, I mean, I, I, yeah, I love those so much. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it and I'll stream it. I think they have. <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm Do looking it. at Calling the, it now. Well, Do I'm, it. I'm looking at the the trailer for this, and it's just getting me so amped up. The thing is, is, <laughs> is what I didn't play through with uh, Kingdom Hearts is that uh, there was a bunch of Game Boy Advanced ones that make the story even more convoluted than a Square Enix game normally is. <laughs> <laughs> three three sixty five over two, and all of that. Yeah, there's like there's a whole bunch of, and they're all canon. So it's like so there's like oh, six wow. games I didn't play. That? I, I, okay, I've got I've to ask you, because I have not gotten into the series. How the fuck are these numbered? The, uh, because I, you've got one, <laughs> one and a half, two, remix, middle. super complete, 365, 1080. <laughs> I think there's only four that were official, like, real games. And then after that, it was just a remake of a game with, like, a little tack on All right, I got, I got you right here. Here's the, here's the Kingdom Hearts timeline, as said by Google. Kingdom Hearts, oh, shit. Kingdom Hearts, Rechain of Memories, uh, Kingdom Hearts 2, Kingdom Hearts uh, 3, 5, 8, slash two <laughs> uh kingdom hearts <laughs> birth by sleep fucking Christ. Uh, kingdom hearts oh there's more i'm not i'm not done <laughs> oh my uh, god um okay so so we can we can be rest assured that it's far more complicated than any final fantasy yeah. game ever was uh, well, I, don't, I don't know about that. that i mean there's <laughs> only two there's only two final fantasy games that tie into each other so i mean 
Final Fantasies oh, are yeah. numbered true. sequentially, but they have nothing to do with each other. So there's seven. Right. There's there's seven, and the recommended player is Kingdom Hearts, Chain of Memories, Kingdom Hearts 2, Kingdom Hearts 35,000 numbers, um, Kingdom Hearts Birth <laughs> by Sleep, Kingdom Hearts Recoded, and then Kingdom Hearts 3D Dream uh, Drop Distance. <laughs> Jesus. I didn't even I, know there were that many of them. Yeah, there's a lot of them. But, I thought they were just a couple. But a lot of them have been remastered and remaked into uh, remade no. into Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and Kingdom Hearts 2.5. Okay. Yeah, and um, so you, I think they all they just, together. I think they <laughs> just recently, had, like in the last month or two, had like uh, 2.75 or something like that. It was a remaster for the f- uh, four or PS4. Uh, thought, yeah, yeah, way. exactly. They got uh, they were released on PS3, but now they're yeah. You're you're ready for the PS4 now. Um, I think I'd rather play through the Metal Gears again. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 that sounds, get, that sounds like a lot less complication. I'm interested in the hearts. <laughs> and then there's one more piece of news I'm just going to push ahead for real quick. Please I do. Think this is big. Yes. Um, so the Oculus Rift right now, the two touch controllers, which are the best VR controller out right now, the headset yep. and two uh, stations for the tracking right now they have on sale for $400. It's a hell of a deal huge sale well they've just announced that even post sale the new standardized price will be five hundred dollars oh wow this is huge it's three hundred dollars less than the vive with everything the vive has plus a better controller granted the vive controller is not bad but this is just a better controller yeah they are trying to get up in the numbers and honestly if you don't have a vr and you're looking at spending a lot of money don't go vive go with this oculus this is this is the really good deal, and you I, still have access to the VR store for Vive. I'm, I'm not I'm not going to go that far. If you want like uh, a McLaren of VR, right? You're going to go with the Vive. If you want a really nice BMW of VR, go with the Oculus. Are you right? really sure true? there's a difference there? Is, yeah, that's what like, I'm saying. Are you, like, sh- are you sure? What's the what's the specs? Like, I don't think I've even looked at the specs of the, the Oculus Rift lately. Is the resolution similar? Is your motion the resolution of the Rift similar? is higher? I think on the I Rift. I don't think so. Hmm. But okay, either way, well, I mean, we're not well, talking. These things are the same pretty much. I don't think they're that big of a difference. They're not. It's not a huge difference. It's not a huge difference. I don't think it's like saying you're getting all this extra power because the big thing is your graphics card. The resolution is exactly the same. The refresh rate is exactly the same. Um, tracking area on the Rift is uh, definitely smaller. Uh, Vive supports 15 by 15 feet. Rift supports five by eleven feet. But that is that based mm-hmm. off the initial configuration where it only came with one. No, that's that's, that's okay, correct. That's, that's from the from a site here. I'm reading it along with you. Yeah. Right. So hmm. built in so audio. It, it, so everything but the tracking area actually, everything looks almost identical minus the tracking area uh, one requirements. Common, are a less. One yeah. common complaint I've heard about the Rift is the built-in headphones. While some people see that as a plus, others want to have um, control over their, their audio headwear, which the, mm-hmm. the Vive just gives you an aux port and you plug in whatever the hell you want. For, and, but <laughs> the Vive is actually working on, I thought this is funny, the headset solution like they have for the, yep. for the Oculus and they're charging $120 for it Yeah, for an add-on headset. So, you know, I, I still think I think the Vive is probably the better purchase today for at least room scale VR. But I mean, honestly, if you get either one of these, they're going to be a fine purchase. I, I would think I would honestly steer people towards the if you're if you're entry into VR and you want to go for something cheaper, if you don't want to like throw a shit ton of money at this, go with the Oculus today. I mean, because you can still do rec room with it. You can still do room scale with it. Five by 11, that's still a good bit of room. Just about everything that runs um, on Steam VR today will run on the Oculus Rift in addition to the Vive. And the nice. bonus is you have access to the Oculus Store, which I still hate the fact that it exists, but the fact is it does, <laughs> and you have un third party software access to it. Right. Right. You can revive a uh, Vive and uh, get access to the Vive. Oculus. Yep. <laughs> but. Yeah, so that's that's interesting. I'm pretty happy to see that because I want VR to go. I want it to succeed, and I think having prices go down will substantially help. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. that's one of the huge barriers. It yeah. puts it within reach for common folk like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's about all we have for you this week, um, though. So we're going to wrap it up. This is a little bit of a long one. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. 
for next week's game after the cast, we don't have anything lined up. So if you have suggestions, uh, tweet at us at at 72 PC podcast. Let us know what you want to play. Or else we'll just default to Dota 2. That's oh a threat. Oh God. Oh God. Please no. listen. suggest please. something else. Give us please, please, for me. Plenty of suggestions. <laughs> We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Um, and if you're watching live, you can catch our YouTube channel, see the content we have there. We have some reviews. We have some clips from some of the podcasts. So you can see the more of the key funny shit. Um, that's our channel at 72 pin connector on our uh, YouTube. If you're at our YouTube, come check us out live Saturday nights, 9 PM Eastern time on Twitch, uh, TV slash 72 pin connector. Uh, we do try to get interactive with the chat. Sometimes they get some really good shit and we have some good jarring going on so just come participate it's a good time we promise <laughs> and i think that's about it tell yeah, your uh, friends about this show yes <laughs> and a uh, special thanks to hollow 5044 for following and a willish i will i will i'm bad at names thank you for following <laughs> thank you for the follow even if we a butchered willish. it we appreciate it <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's all we got for you this week. So until next week, game on. See you, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Take care. Bye.